Modern Darwinian theory, known as neo-Darwinism, is based on the idea that mutations in genes provide the raw material needed for evolution to work. Darwin's theory requires a source of new variations. And in modern Darwinian theory, that source is genetic mutation. Well, we know genetic mutation can produce changes in proteins, protein molecules. This is what leads to some cases of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. But evolution involves a lot more than changes in protein molecules. It involves changes in entire organisms, shapes of organisms, what biologists call morphology. One of the best known examples of a mutation affecting morphology is the four-winged fruit fly. In opening a biology text, um, one will often see a picture of a four-winged fruit fly. Now, as we know, ordinary fruit flies have only two wings. The four-winged fruit fly has not only its regular set of wings, but a second set of wings just next to that. And the caption or the text will say, this is evidence for um, the process of evolution, that mutations affect the process of development, and you can get anomalies as interesting as a four-winged fruit fly. Gene duplications and rearrangements of genes can indeed produce very sudden genetic changes. Um, they can produce changes that are as dramatic as a fruit fly that suddenly has an extra pair of wings or has an antenna where its eye was supposed to be. And I give those exa as examples not of evolution, but of the ability of the genetic toolkit to produce very sudden and dramatic changes in an organism's morphology. Well, it turns out that the four-winged fruit fly is actually a very poor example of Darwinian evolution, certainly. There are no muscles attached to it, so the second set of wings is effectively dead. Uh, the fly is a hopeless cripple. It's kind of like having a small plane with an extra pair of wings tied to its tail. The fly can only survive in the laboratory, uh, and it would be selected out by natural selection in the wild. So it's not uh, a step forward in evolution. It's an evolutionary dead end. And it turns out that all morphological mutations that we know of are either have no effect on the organism at all, no, no fitness effect, or they're harmful. We don't know of any that are useful. I think this creates a real paradox for evolution. If you're going to change animal form, you've got to do it in a way that the organism can survive and can pass on those new changes. We don't have examples of these kinds of large-scale changes. It's almost as if the fruit fly says, if you want me to exist at all, I better have two eyes, six legs, two wings, and so on. I better have more or less the normal form 